Uh, tonight, we continue a tradition here at the White House by honoring some extraordinary people who have no business being on the same stage together. <laughs> We've got Buddy Guy sitting next to Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> We've got Dave Letterman alongside one of the greatest ballerinas of all time. I don't think Dave dances. <laughs> all three living members of Led Zeppelin in one place. So uh, this is a remarkable evening. Tonight's honorees uh, didn't just take up their crafts to make a living. They did it because they couldn't imagine living any other way. And that passion took each of them from humble beginnings to the pinnacle of their profession. And tonight, in the People's House, we have a chance to say thank you. And growing up as the son of a sharecropper in Louisiana, Buddy Guy made his first guitar out of wires from a window screen. Uh, that worked until his parents started wondering how all the mosquitoes were getting in. <laughs> <laughs> but Buddy was hooked, and a few years later, he bought a one-way ticket to Chicago uh, to find his heroes, Muddy Waters and Howling Wolf. And pretty soon, he was broke, hungry, and ready to head home. And then one night, outside a blues club, uh, a man pulled up and handed Buddy a salami sandwich and said, I'm mud, and you ain't going nowhere. And that was the start of something special. And when The Graduate was originally written, the main character was supposed to be Robert Redford, a tall, blonde track star. And when Dustin Hoffman auditioned for the part, a crew member handed him a subway token on his way out saying, uh, here, kid, you're going to need this. Dustin ended up getting the role, and it launched one of the greatest movie careers uh, of his generation, of, of any generation. If you ask David Letterman what's it like to tape his show, uh, he'll say, if it's going well, it just lifts you. If it's not going well, it sinks you. It's exhilarating. It's my favorite hour of the day. Now, it's unclear uh, how Dave feels about this hour. Uh, it's different when you're not uh, the one with the mic, isn't it, Dave? You, <laughs> you're looking a little, a little stressed, aren't you? Uh, I'd also point out it's a lot warmer here than it is on Dave's uh, set. When Natalia Makarova defected from the Soviet Union in 1970, she made headlines around the globe. Uh, but back home, her name was excised from textbooks, her photo expunged from the walls of her school, and for the next 18 years, her countrymen were forced to rely on underground channels to follow the rise of one of the most accomplished ballerinas in the world. But no one can erase what takes hold of the heart. And in 1989, when the Iron Curtain opened, the Russian people welcomed her back with open arms. So when Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham burst on the musical scene in the late 1960s. The world never saw it coming. Uh, there was this singer with a mane like a lion, a voice like a banshee, a guitar prodigy who left people's jaws on the floor, a versatile bassist who was equally at home on the keyboards, a drummer who played like his life depended on him. And, and when the Brits initially kept their distance, Led Zeppelin grabbed America uh, from the opening chord. Each of us can remember a moment when the people on this stage touched our lives. Uh, maybe they didn't lead us to become performers ourselves, but maybe they inspired us to see things in a new way, uh, to hear things differently, to discover something within us, or to appreciate how much beauty there is in the world. 